Why, hello. Um, that. This is where I've been keeping my end over there, my springs and my rings and stuff. My original plan for the project was to make a two foot by six foot, or no. My original plan for the project was to make a two foot by three foot just rectangle of chainmail that was humongous. It's kind of the point of this. It was just fun to make such humongous chainmail that really is redonkulous. That's kind of the whole point of this project. It was just fun and crazy. But this is a one foot by one foot square sheet of chainmail. So I am only one sixth done with the project as I intended it to be. So as fun as this was to begin with, I think I'll probably stop here. And if ever I want to continue, I can continue later because I still have a bunch of springs that need to be cut. I have a bucket full of rings that need to be closed, straightened, filed, and then weaved into chainmail. And I've got a lot to go. I, I've spent maybe 12 hours already on this project. And for every, because I've made all the springs and I've done a lot of work yet, for every one foot by one foot square that I make, it'll probably cost me about four hours. So if that's just a sixth, that's another four, eight, 12, 16, 20 hours. 20 hours to make a big sheet like I want. So if I really bust my chops two days in a row, I could probably make this in two days. But there's no way that I'm, I mean, just the amount of weaving that I have yet to do and how much this sucks to weave, how thick this is, um, that probably isn't gonna happen. But let me explain to you what I found that helps. Because normal pliers will scratch up these rings and they'll make sharp burrs. Well, not that sharp, but they're too sharp for my, for my liking. So what I've been doing, let me turn on the light. Ta-da! If you guys wanna learn how to, to weave channel, there's all sorts of videos online on, on how to do that. Um, but I've been using these. It's important that you get uh, some clamps. This this is, I mean, just like you would normally use pliers on chainmail, I'm using these two locking pliers. These are Bremen, Bremen. There's some from Irwin that you can get at Menards or, or maybe Home Depot? I don't know about Home Depot, but Menards, I, I saw them there. Um, these ones are the Harbor Freight knockoff that are like half the price. And these do just fine. For me, I use some sandpaper and I ground down the teeth so that they don't scratch so much. If you if you slip, they'll scratch them. And it'll scratch them just a little bit anyway, but that's gonna be your best bet, is to hold them really tightly. Tighten this down real good and and bend them. Uh, with a lot of these rings, when you're just making the, the links, the, the four-in-one individual links, it's fine. And this will, this will do just fine. But when you're trying to weave in the middle of a sheet like this, there's really, not a good place to put your pliers because there's so much material underneath that you're there's no place for the pliers to be there's no place for your hands and so when you end up closing clamping down on on each side of the ring and you close it ends up closing the ring um but it has a gap in it and what i ended up doing is i would while it's still open you know i take it over to the anvil and i'd squish it so that it's like this this is my hand really doesn't bend very uh, circular I don't know how to describe this, but essentially you have the ring and it's like, it's, you know, it was a spring and then you cut it and then it's off a little bit. So all you have to do is open it up if you want to put more rings on or close it. Well, so essentially what I did is while it's still a ring, you open it up and then you hammer it. So this, how it's normally like this, you close it that much. And so when you're using the pliers in that awkward position, by the time you get each end gets to each other, it's flush. Ta-da, there you go, you have a ring. Anyways, that's what I did to make the gaps a lot tighter. That's what I was doing, I hope that's understandable. The reason I was using a hacksaw to cut these things instead of just an abrasive wheel, which would be a lot quicker, is that then there's less filing to do because there's less of a burr, and the abrasive wheel leaves a big burr where the hacksaw does not. Uh, but also, I really want that, that gap when I cut the springs to be as small as possible because I don't want a big gap in the seams of my ring. 